All right, welcome to the next lecture, which is Networks 101. And so the goal for us is obviously to discuss some of the fundamentals so that we can build towards OT networking. And these fundamentals are incredibly important to understand, not only because of how the signals travel, but also with the intent to understand some of the nomenclature. So without any further delay, let's get started. So in a general sense, a consumer grade network is going to look like this. So you have an ISP, which is the internet service provider, so ISP, and this is going to be whomever you're paying to get internet to your home, right? And this is going to be similar to a plant, of course, there's also going to be external access to either offices and the and or the plant floor. So the ISP is going to have what's called a modem and then a router. In most cases, those devices in the modern architecture are going to be one single device, but sometimes they still come in a pair. And so what you will have inside of your house or inside of your factory are either, like I said, sometimes one device, usually it is going to be one, sometimes it's going to be two devices. The modem is usually going to translate the signal from the ISP into what's going to be usable inside of your house. And so I have an example here of the provider that I have done a lot of work with, which is local to the Canadian market called Vidéotron, but ultimately they provide the combo, which is coming in here, you have the coaxial cable, and then you're going to have some ethernet ports. And don't worry if you don't understand all of the things that I'm mentioning right now, this is meant to be an introduction, a basic level course. However, how does this actually allow us to communicate to the overall network or the entire internet. So your router is going to provide a means to connect different devices. And we'll get into how this is going to be different on the plant floor, but basically in your home, you're going to probably have a set of different laptops. You're going to have perhaps a computer, right? So this is going to be a monitor. I'm going to just draw it as best as I can here on the screen. You're going to have computers, you're going to have tablets, you're going to have cell phones, and all of them are going to communicate to one network, usually wirelessly, but the router, as I've shown you just a moment ago, also have RJ45 ports, which is a physical connection. I hope that you've connected that way at some point in time, but let's assume that the desktop is going to have a wired connection and everything else is going to be wireless connecting over the uh, network to the router. So here in this setting, everything is going to be handled for the consumer. In a plant environment, it's rarely going to be treated as such, but in this case, what's happening is the router is going to assign an IP address and we'll get into the details as to what that is if you're not there yet. But basically it gives a unique identifier to each device that is connected to that network, right? And so the router can have different networks. Usually the ISP is going to have a default one. So for me, it's going to be on the label I believe here at the bottom. So here you have the network as well as the password on the la label of this router and modem combo. You should have something similar. You can obviously change those settings. Again, it's not good practice to have the default, but you can name it something like Vlad network, for example. So Vlad network. And when you want to join from a phone, from a tablet, from a laptop, or from a desktop, you're going to be prompted for a password. Once you get into the password, and the network, you're going to have signals coming from your ISP to the router and to the device and obviously back. And that's what allows you to basically go and view pages, view videos like the one that you're watching right now, pull in information, pull in different manuals and allows you to communicate to the World Wide Web via the uh, modem and router combo through your internet service provider. There's going to be some other terms that we would like to discuss. So for example, here we would call this the, and I'm going to put the label maybe here, the WAN or the wide area network. And here you're going to have what's called the local area network. And so LAN is going to be a very common term used inside of networking when it comes to a small segment and network. And that is a very important concept. So basically what is happening without getting into all of the details is that you're able to route packets between all of these devices 
extremely quickly because they're part of the smaller segmented network, but you're also able to translate the IP addresses or the unique identifiers to the wide web without causing any issues, right? And this is a feat of engineering, if I would want to call it as such, because ultimately each household is going to have a couple or a dozen or several dozen of different devices and none of those devices are going to interfere with somebody else's home. So for example, I could have an ID, ID here inside of my home that's going to be unique to my desktop. Somebody else can have the exact same ID inside of their household but the router is going to handle managing that ID because your internet service provider is going to give you a static or dynamic IP address, right? And so again, we're going to talk all about IP addresses and how they're created, how they're assigned, how they're manipulated. But what I want you to understand in Networks 101 is that it is a marvel of engineering and there's going to be a couple of basic components that make the network reliable, resilient, and also easy to use on the consumer side. And we'll have to manage those configurations on the OT side. In either case, it's going to be a short video. If you have any questions on this side, if you have any maybe questions before we discuss it further, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them.